Amir Earhart was born in Atchison, Kansas on July 24, 1897, in the home of her grandfather, Judge Alfred Otis, and his wife. She lived there until she was 12, when her father, Edwin, a railroad lawyer, got a job in Iowa. Her childhood home in Atchison is now a museum. By 1916, Earhart's family had moved to the Philadelphia area, and she attended Wagant's College for Women. The next year, 1917, after three semesters there, Earhart went to Canada to work as a nurse in the war effort. Following the war, Earhart ended up in California, where her family had moved. In 1921, she left her father for flying lessons, and soon after, Earhart was being trained by noted aviatrix Netta Shrimp, who was employed at Kenner Aircraft Company. By the mid-1920s, Earhart had moved to Massachusetts and was working as a social worker at a neighborhood facility called Denison House. One day in early spring of 1928, Earhart got a call from a Captain Rayleigh, representing promoter George Palmer Putnam. Would Earhart care, Rayleigh wanted to know, to be the first woman to fly the Atlantic as a passenger? You're kidding, Earhart told Rayleigh flatly. But Rayleigh wasn't, and Earhart soon changed her mind. In June, Earhart, Lewis Gordon, and Wilmer Stultz made history aboard the airplane Friendship, successfully flying the Atlantic in 20 hours and 40 minutes before landing in the harbor at Trapassi, Wales. Over the next seven years, more records followed. I believe you'll find a rather strong northwest wind up there. But if it drifts you too far out, I think you'll have plenty of gasoline to get back. Well, I'll get right into it Was it very cold? Didn't seem very cold. I didn't get high enough to need oxygen either. Been using the oxygen. No, I like to try this again. Of course, this wasn't an altitude test. It was simply getting the ceiling of this particular airplane, and I don't believe that I got the ceiling of it today. I'm going to try again. What did your altimeter show? It showed a little more than 18,000, but I think I could get a couple thousand more. in Washington. The officers of the line believe they offer something new in air transportation to the public. A milker of the Atlantic won over the treacherous Pacific. Roaring into the Oakland airport, she brings to a triumphant finish her 2,400-mile hop from Hawaii after 18 hours in the air. 10,000 cheer the end of the apical flight as the Lady Lindy slides into a perfect landing with two records, 
the first woman to fly the Pacific and the first person to fly it solo. She receives one of the most tumultuous greetings ever accorded a flyer. Roses to Amelia and the products of the world to a veteran of flights that have shown the way for aviation's progress. It's her most brilliant chapter in a 16-year aviation career. How does it feel to fly both oceans, Miss Earhart? Well, it was very interesting to me to fly in southern waters rather than in the north. On the Atlantic flight, I had ice conditions and general storm. On this flight, really no bad weather at all except a few little rain squalls. I saw the moon and stars most of the night. Of course, in both flights, I was very glad to see land. On July 2nd, 1937, Amelia Earhart takes off from Lake New Guinea. Within 23 hours, she radios to the Coast Guard cutter at Tasca that she must be nearby but cannot see them. She also reports that her fuel is getting low, and after that, nothing. In short order, the largest search in history is set in motion for a Mew Earhart in the Pacific. A total of four million nineteen thirty seven dollars are spent. This is the equivalent of approximately forty eight million two thousand seventeen dollars. The search is finally called off, and the government declares that no trace had been found of Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart slips from aviation history into aviation legend. Finally, a new book is released with fresh new perspectives and possible answers. Awaiting Dragon, the new book by David K. Bowman, which was released this month, seeks to answer the following questions and more. What was magic? Was Amelia Earhart a member of the room? What happened to Frederick Noonan's fingerprints? What is the importance of the Putnam Papers? These and other perspectives are new and discussed nowhere else. Order your copy to Dave's site, Amazon Create Space or Amazon.com, for a fresh look at the disappearance of Amelia Earhart. Also available as an ebook. Also check out Legend of Maine. Recognized in the 2008 Best Books online competition, Legend of Maine is the most comprehensive book on the disappearance of Amelia Earhart ever written. Your library won't be complete without it. Also available as an e-book. Finally, there are three other Earhart books of interest. Amelia Earhart Philately, Secret Saipan, and the story of Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart Philately is a one-of-a-kind book on Earhart stamps, covers, and other similar materials. It was recognized with an exhibit award at the 2016 Philatelic Society Convention in Portland, Oregon. An extensive rework of an earlier title, Secret Saipan details Dave Bowman's 2015 visit to Saipan. It contains the most extensive current color photography available of Saipan. The story of Emil Earhart is a lavishly illustrated coffee table type book. All of Dave's books are featured at the Emil Earhart Birthplace Museum in Atchison, Kansas. <laughs>